I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another episode of the ex Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you watching. Tonight, I'm very pleased to introduce to you Mary Hilding, who is a Facebook friend of mine and is also from the state of Illinois, actually El Paso, Illinois. I didn't even know there was a place called El Paso. Yep, there is. <laughs> Illinois. But thanks so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. She's also going to be doing an interview with uh, Rob Sobolka and his uh, meet up ex-Mormons or something, I think it's called. Yep. I should know that. And because um, I go to it all the time. And uh, anyway, you're going to be doing that on Saturday, but that'll be after this airs. Yep. But people can go find that, I'm sure. And, yep. Well, Mary, it's nice to have you here. And I'm glad you made it safely. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us, you were actually born in a United Methodist Church uh, atmosphere. Is that true? I was. My dad was a United Methodist pastor. Um, have I'm one of nine children. Wow. Um, my parents were told they couldn't have kids, so they adopted the first one and had seven more. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was it was great growing up as a pastor's kid. Had he always wanted to be a pastor? Was that, had he always been religious? Yes, yeah. yep. And um, so I, I, I definitely enjoyed it, and, um, but when I was 14, he passed away. Oh and it was super hard for me i was a daddy's girl oh, yeah. and so where did you fit in the family i'm fourth oldest fourth oldest mm -hmm. okay so i was definitely mad at god um mm -hmm. for taking him yeah how and did mom do she did actually really well did she? for having um lost her husband you know yeah for having lost her husband and and having all those kids sure. and I was probably three kids into one. <laughs> I definitely gave my mom a run for her money. Well, that's what you get paid for as a teenager. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so. I'm sure you were supportive and loving. Yeah. Uh, so um, you would grow up in that atm uh, atmosphere or at least that church. And do you feel like you know Jesus? I mean, we always ask Mormons that have been raised in the church if, if they knew uh, the Jesus of the Bible. Did you feel like you knew him? Um. A little bit. I, I was more, um, I basically lived my parents' religion and okay. not my own. Um, and so, or my, my parents' faith. Sure. And so, um, so growing up, I really, I really didn't know what it was like to be a true follower of Jesus. Mm. Uh, had you been baptized as a Christian at that point or? No, I'd been baptized when I was like, Two weeks. Oh, really? so oh, young. sprinkling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the way the United Methodists yep. did that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what happens in life? I guess you take uh, you're going to high school and. Do you... I went to high school, and um, I tried to get out of there as quick as I could. I graduated early. Yeah. Went off and did youth with the mission, mm. and um, my mom said, you know, I don't care what you do after high school, but I want you to, to do youth with the mission. And so how long is that? It's, it just depends on what school you go to. Oh, I went I to a discipleship training school, which was five months and then went back and did a school of evangelism. 
oh. for five months. And I was actually involved in YWAM for three and a half years. What was that called? Youth with a Mission, YWAM. Oh, YWAM, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so I was involved for three and a half years just because I didn't want to do college. Oh. And so, um, and so I, I got to the point where um, I was done with YWAM and so I, I did go to college and that then, was... Was this in Illinois too? This was actually in Tennessee. Oh. I went to Lee University. Oh, okay down in um, Cleveland, Tennessee okay. for about a year and a half. I played rugby there. Really? Yep. Very intense. Boy, it I... definitely got me through through school. That's a tough, tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I did that for a year and a half and then I transferred. Um, my grandparents weren't doing very good, so I wanted to be closer to home. Mm. So um, I transferred to a school in Southern Illinois mm. called McHenry University. Okay. And that was I found a rugby team in St. Louis, <laughs> joined it, and that was when I started looking at women differently. I started oh. feeling um, attracted to them, mm. and and so I ended up actually in a psych ward for, for a week down in, in St. Louis because I tried overdosing on medicine mm. um, because I was very confused in, you know, in my sexuality and... Yeah. So, and that must have been a tough time. Yeah. What happened next? So, once I got out of the psych ward, I basically came out to my friends and family, and I knew, um, I knew my mom wouldn't approve because of growing up sure. in the Christian home. Sure. So, I, uh, but you know, I, I decided to do what I felt like it was, you know, good to do, and so. Um, got involved in relationships and thankfully looking back at it I can see God's hand in it even in this even yeah, yeah even in this oh. because um, you know all my relationships weren't good relationships yeah so he definitely got me out of it the last relationship I was in she was actually she actually introduced me to the Mormon Church and was she LDS so, then she used to be LDS oh. she left the church oh so. and what do you mean introduced you started learning about we, it or we lived about an hour and a half from Nauvoo, oh. and so we would Nauvoo, go. Nauvoo, Illinois. Yep, of Nauvoo, Illinois. So we would go to Nauvoo several times um, a year. Mm, you started learning about mm -hmm. the history of the church. Learning about or? the history of the church, and meeting fantastic people, and um, and I actually, when I was in the gay lifestyle, I felt like I was being judged by Christians come well, to find out sure. it wasn't um, it wasn't them turning their back against me it was me turning my back against them oh really mm-hmm so huh. Interesting. Yeah. yeah how long did you do this with Nauvoo and, and so on or, or were you look ever take the missionary lessons then I did eventually? and the first time we took missionary lessons um, two young men and they had said some very harsh words towards some single missionaries that we knew mm. and so i was like i'm not single, <laughs> joining when joining, you say single missionaries you mean that were in Na in nauvoo yeah oh, single missionaries in nauvoo oh so people that were working at mm -hmm. the different yeah. centers and stuff yeah. oh well that so. wasn't very nice was no it? <laughs> well that's not a very good way to sell the church <laughs> no but you do eventually join the church i do yeah yep. um i basically i went to a counselor for about seven years and she you know basically said you know you weren't born gay she said i think because you lost your dad at such a young age primitive age that that's what caused you to grow up thinking that you were born gay really? and so um did you agree with that i did i did and so i ended up leaving that lifestyle and three months later, ended up joining the Mormon Church. I don't know that this is the format for all that, but I'm curious enough to ask. I guess is was that an easy give up? At it first, was, it wasn't. Wasn't. But I knew that that wasn't the the path, and it was leading me down a destructive okay path. And so you feel good about the, that decision? I do. And I do. So you see God's hand in that for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you join the Mormon Church just a few months, or 
shortly thereafter. Yep, yep. joined the Mormon Church. Do you feel what, like you had a testimony of the gospel I when did. you were preaching, when mm -hmm. they were teaching you? Yep. That? When I joined it, um, I put the ground running, yeah. got a calling in, in um, primary, Yeah. Um, young women, and the person I um, worked with, fantastic lady, and um, was in my calling for a couple months and then ended up moving back with my mom and stepdad. What they, how'd they feel about you joining the church? Um, they did not like it. No. <laughs> when I... Because she, my mom said, you know, if, if you need to move back home, you can. And I said, well, just because I moved back home doesn't mean I'm going to leave the Mormon church. Okay. So, um, so I ended up moving back home. And... Uh, Did you and, attend church there then in El yes, Paso? Yes. Um, actually in Bloomington. In Bloomington. Mm -hmm. oh. there's, a, there's a ward there in Bloomington. Okay. So I started going there and ended up meeting a guy. Okay. Um super nice guy and we started dating um and two months later we ended up taking a trip out to salt lake mm. and um and on our way back we had stopped in colorado to see a friend of mine and she gave me the third degree about being in the mormon church so what kind of, a friend from a friend from, from actually a friend from ywam mm -hmm. oh okay so she, did she tell you things that you'd never heard before about the Mormon Church, or what did she yeah, share? Yeah, she she just said, you know, you really need to look into the history. You really need to. Um, you may not know everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, she's like, it doesn't line up with the Bible, and so. Now did you, did you dismiss that pretty much? I did. Much, I did. Yeah. But on our way home, you know, it was still in the back of my mind, and yeah, and. Um, so when we get home, you know, I was just so like, so frustrated um, that my mom was against it, um, that my, you know, some of my friends, um, most of the rest of my family. And so I basically left the church and... Did you study more? I mean, did you figure, learn that what she had been saying was... I didn't really study then. True? Oh. No, okay. not, not, not a whole lot. I'm, I'm a people pleaser. And so, with mom against it and your mm -hmm. friends against it, so yeah, okay. Yeah. So ended up leaving, and my fiance at the time, I you know gave him an ultimatum. I said, you know, you can either leave the Mormon Church or you can stay. Oh, he was a member of the church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I said, but I don't want to be, you know, I I don't I I can't marry you, okay. because I knew my my family would would disagree. Well. Then um, we ended up church shopping. The two of you? Mm-hmm. Oh. Trying to find a church that would fit. and He was willing to do that? Yeah, he okay. was willing to do that. He had been a member six years. Oh. Um, but he really cared about me and was willing to do that. And so, oh. um, so we ended up church shopping and not finding one. You know, we'd be at one for a couple months and you know, go to another one and just wasn't content with yeah. it. And so we ended up getting married in 2012, Okay. in April 2012. Four months later, he says, um, I, the only reason I married you was because I thought you'd be the submissive wife and go back to Mormon church with me after we were married. Oh, he thought you could change you mm -hmm. after you got married. Yeah, and yeah. so that sort of, like for a little bit sort of turned turned myself away from the Mormon church and didn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Then come to find out it wasn't the Mormon church that, um, you know, told him to say that. It was himself. Yeah. So then, um, and then, so then last summer, so then, I'm sorry, we, um, he ended up leaving and then that following May got divorced. Mm -hmm. So we were married and divorced in th yeah. 13 months. Okay. So. And he, has he stayed active in the church? As yes. As far as you know? He has. Yeah. yeah. Well, did did he ever, did you ever share with him anything? Or were you even at, even at that point understanding these problems with Mormonism? You were leaving just because you were people pleaser. Right, right. Not because of doctrine. No. Nope. Not, not doctrine. Yeah. No. Nope. 
So, so did you learn more about Mormonism after you left? I did, yeah. and um, I know you ran into a, or you went to a concert at some point. Yeah, didn't you? So we actually had this band called that. Adams Road. Yeah, come to they, they come out here every year for yeah. several couple of months, and um, they actually came to my mom's church, and um, and so had you ever heard of them before? Um, I had. Yeah. I actually had a a friend who shared the Sacred Grove. Um, testimony with me, the Adams Road oh, with yeah. Lynn Wilder and Michael Wilder, yeah. their testimony. And so, um, so I ended up watching it and, and so I was like, maybe, you know, they do some traveling. And so they ended up coming. Yeah. And at this point they had a book that Lynn Wilder had wrote called Unveiling Grace. Unveiling Grace yeah. They had given me a copy and I read it. They, the, Adams yeah, Adam's Road, Road had given me a copy uh, during and, after that concert, I mm -hmm. guess. Huh? Oh. Yeah, and so I read it and ended up contacting Lynn. Mm. We were um, talking and and skyping back and forth for for a couple months, and and um, she said, you know, Mary, she said, you are living a double-minded life. You either need to completely be all into Mormonism or completely be all in Christianity. You can't, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Did you and agree so, with that? I mean, you felt like that was good I, counsel? I did, yeah. but I ended up leaving. Um, I ended up leaving, like, I, I stopped talking to her and ended up going back to the Mormon church. Really? Mm -hmm. What prompted that? I just, the community. I was yeah. definitely looking for a church that had community. And... Um, and so I, I really enjoyed that. I love the the three forms of heaven teaching that they do. The three degrees of glory. Yeah, the huh? three degrees of glory. And that you were going to become a goddess some someday, or did you think that? Or? Um, not really. Yeah. And I I I really enjoyed doing baptisms as well. Baptisms for the for dead. the dead. Yeah. yeah. In the temple. Mm-hmm. In the temple. So uh -huh. yeah. So you you rejoin or you attempt to you had resigned is that right? I did I did resign when I left. I ended up sending a letter to my um, stake president. Now was this before you went back to the church or this was uh, have before. I jumped ahead? No, this was before. Okay, I'd gone back to the church and so I resigned and got my name removed. Okay, and then. Back in January this last year, January 2015, wow. um, I went to the Nauvoo president and went to my branch president or my ward president and or ward bishop and mm -hmm. and said, you know, I want to rejoin the church. And so they tried to find my membership number. They mm -hmm. ended up finding it. Oh, so um, so I was on my way back into coming back to the Mormon church. And, and what prompted that? Just this decision that Lynn had recommended that you either choose one or the other? Yeah. And you decided to choose mm -hmm. Mormonism. Because that, that was what I was more comfortable with. Okay. They um, are more, they, it, to, to me it's like, and I think it, it, in a way Christianity can, Christians can learn from yeah. it because great culture, they're, they're great so, social. yeah, in yeah. the community is just so, yeah. is so tight. Very helpful and, mm -hmm. yeah, home teachers and visiting yeah. teachers and the whole business. Yeah. So what happens next? I mean, how do you? So I started going back to the Mormon church and something, I now I look back at it and it was definitely God. Yeah. Um, but at the time, something said, you need to contact Lynn. This was in April this last year. So you need after to contact the January, Lynn. you've come mm -hmm. back. April, you contact yep. Lynn again. Yep. And what you need the, to contact her. And so I was what like, did she say? I contacted her and she said, I'm going to be in Indianapolis, Indiana in May. See if you can come over. Okay. And Is that so, for the temple, the opening of the temple? She, she No, this was actually, um, she had some up. speaking engagements oh, there. okay. And so I ended up going and, and my... My mindset was to stump her with questions. Yeah. And so, um, and, and I was to the point where, like, I needed to just figure out what was the truth. Yeah. And so. That is frustrating. Yeah, yeah. very frustrating. Yeah. 
So I ended up getting there, sitting through their, um, sitting through their lecture, ended up asking questions, um, Mike and Lynn questions. And, um, and so then I ended up staying with Lynn's sister, um, and her family. Yeah. And ended up going to church with them on Sunday. A Christian church. A Christian church, yep. And long behold, the sermon was about grace and <laughs> grace alone. And so I was like... Had you really heard that message before? No, no. <laughs> Where was that message? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay, that was definitely for me. Really? And so in the afternoon on Sunday, I ended up going to hear Lynn and Mike speak again. And mm. it was like for the first time scales just completely fell from my eyes and I was able to see the truth and isn't that a joyful yeah. moment when yeah. that happens I mean, yeah all of us are wait a minute where have I been yeah. all this time yeah. yeah so I go back to uh Lynn's sister's house yeah. and we just have a time of you know singing songs and they're very musically gifted and I'm a drummer and so oh, really? I brought my drum <laughs> we were we were you know playing songs and then halfway through it the husband was like you know are you completely ready to give your life completely to the lord right. and put mormonism behind and i was like yeah i'm ready and so really i so i prayed the prayer and for the first time in 18 years since my dad died i felt peace oh and just like 15 pounds completely lift off my shoulders <laughs> because I knew, I knew the truth. And so my yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. My burden is yeah. light. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so the freedom probably that mm -hmm. you hadn't because it before that you're working your way. I mean, you probably in this process of coming back and forth from Mormonism, you're probably feeling guilty that you're not doing enough. Right. I my guess. Right. Is that yes. right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So I'm on my way home from Indianapolis and, you know, I was praying and I said, God, if I'm to share my story with anybody, let that happen. And three days later, I get a phone call from Lynn saying, hey, we're going to be in Nauvoo in June. Um, I want you to consider sharing your story. Oh my and I said, well, I prayed about it and, you know, and so I'll, I'll definitely come and share. So anywhere that they, except for one speaking engagement, anywhere that they spoke, they had me get up and, and share, share my story. story. And that Saturday, Mike and Lynn baptized me. Did they? It was the first time that Mike had ever baptized someone since oh. leaving the Mormon church yeah. for him. So When he's lost the priesthood. Yeah. And all that. yeah. <laughs> well, Mary, that's yeah. so exciting. And so you've had such an interesting journey, but do you, sent, you see God's hand then in all these different steps that you've taken? I do, yeah. And once you saw, uh, like you say, the scales came off, that, is there any chance you could go back to Mormonism? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Knowing what I know now, um, because I know, you know, I've been studying more about the Mormon church, and yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I, I, you know, that would be like completely turning my back against Jesus, and I don't want to do that you, again. You just couldn't do it. Has no. the, have you, did you read the Bible much before, either as a, in your old life or as a Mormon? Did you read the Bible, or are you reading it now? Not much as a Mormon. Um, yeah. I, I, I read it just to say that I was reading. Yeah. But now, you know, when, when I left in May, May 17th yeah. was when I left the church, and uh -huh. I started with John and, and working Isn't, my way. Were you reading things you'd never read before? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, you've got a scripture you want to share so, with us from Romans. Would you want to do I, that? I do. Yep, it's Romans eight thirty seven through 39. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Uh, you know, and the one I love is, He that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just such a gift that He's given us, this gift of grace. And we can't do anything to earn it. Yeah. It's a gift, and we just have to, uh, or we just want to accept it. And, yeah. And then we have it.
Yep. And nothing can separate us from the exactly. love of God. Exactly. Isn't that amazing? Exactly. You never mm -hmm. understood that. Now, do you, rec do you recognize things that your dad and mom may have taught, taught you early on in your life? Uh, Absolutely. Before you, yeah, Absolutely. That you weren't really uh, mature enough, I guess, or attentive enough at right. that point to hear. And right. And, and my mom told me a couple of years ago, she said, you know, we prayed for each of you kids before you were born. Yeah. And we prayed specifically for you that you'd be in mission somewhere, that you'd be serving God. Wow. And now... Oh, you're sure doing that now? Yeah. What does she think about what's happened since May? Oh, she she is so... She was, like, I was Skyping with Lynn one day, and my mom was like... Mind. Yeah. And my mom was like, I want to say something to her. And so she was like, you know, thank you, yeah. you know, for being used by God to... Yeah reached Mary and wow. you know it's just incredible to see her transformation. Well our time's just about out. I just wonder if there's something you would say to Mormons who are converts. You know people join the church for various reasons. Mm -hmm. They probably don't know very much because the missionaries don't teach them very much. But in, in conclusion could you kind of share your story, um, something you'd say to the convert Mormon and then maybe to your friends or family or kind of wrap us up here <laughs> I think, in a minute or so. You know, I think you, you need to research the truth. You need to um, find what you believe and why you believe it and not, not let man stand between you and God. Well, that's good. So. But there's things like the history and doctrine of the church that you weren't taught as a convert. Right. I mean, as a yeah, as a right. early on yep. convert. Have you been able to study that? I guess some of that comes out in in Lynn's book, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And some of those things. Yeah. And, and it just seems like there's more and more of that now mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So, um, well, I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. And yeah, thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. Anything last minute you'd like to? say for a few seconds <laughs> I mean that yeah it's just such a joyful message yeah the cross has meant something to me now that I notice you're wearing a cross yeah. and I, wear and I don't take it off yeah yeah so. I kind of traded my garments in for the yeah. cross but yeah it's been such a joyful thing and the Bible has opened up for us as a family and yeah. we just never appreciated it before yeah so Mary thanks again for yeah, coming thank you for having me Appreciate it so much, and we appreciate you watching, and hope you'll catch another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. See you later.